Welcome to Municipal Affairs. I'm your host, Christopher Brown. Now, in this episode, we're continuing our journey into Bill 20. Bill 20 emerges as the harbinger of significant change, poised to reshape the intricate relationship between local and provincial powers. Alberta municipalities, the collective voice representing the province's cities, towns, villages, and summer villages, has raised a red flag on the proposed legislation. Now, at a recent press conference, they voiced deep concerns echoing throughout municipal circles, shedding light onto the potential repercussions of Bill 20. At its core, Bill 20 signifies a seismic shift in power dynamics, empowering the provincial cabinet with unprecedented control over local governments, according to the organization. The palpable fear among municipal officials, as articulated by Alberta Municipalities President Tyler Gandam, underscores the gravity of the situation. The looming specter of repercussions casts a shadow over anyone who dares question or oppose the dictates of provincial governments. Here is President Tyler Gandam's full remarks to reporters on Monday. Good afternoon. I'm Tyler Gandam, President of Alberta Municipalities and Mayor for the City of Wetaskiwin. Thank you for participating in today's online media event. I'm here today to speak on behalf of Alberta Municipalities, 265 member communities of all sizes and locations across Alberta. Our summer villages, villages, towns, and cities. Out of Alberta's population of 4.8 million, nearly 4.1 million live in our member communities. That's 85% of Albertans. I wanna start by reflecting on what community means in Alberta. Since its earliest beginnings, Alberta has grown with a sense of community. During the Great Depression of the 1930s, women would gather around a table and in the dim light of a farmhouse, they would hand sew quilts. They would complete a quilt for one family before starting on another for the next family. Today, farmers will help each other with the harvest taking in the crop as quickly as possible when the conditions are right so each of them can optimize their income. Community means working together to the benefit of all. Albertans find community even in competition. We are very fortunate in Alberta to have two NHL teams which creates a fun rivalry that we as Albertans celebrate and enjoy together. People from across Canada and around the world continue to flock here for the opportunity to live a better life and to contribute to a better building place. Our province, our home, has prospered because this sense of community is fundamental to who we are. That sense of community is now threatened. We know that Albertans appreciate elected officials who say what they mean and mean what they say. Albertans value straight talk, and they don't shy away from difficult conversations. So, I'm going to tell it the way Alberta Municipality sees it. To be clear, Alberta Municipalities is speaking out about Bill 20, because the bill has already created an atmosphere in which some of our members are fearing repercussions if they disagree openly with the provincial government. Many of us have spent time reviewing Bill 20 over the past three days. As you know, from your reporting, there's a lot of information to digest and analyze in the 132-page document. Here is what Alberta Municipalities has determined so far. Bill 20 is an attempt by the provincial government to grab more power and wield more control over how people choose to live in their own communities. I can't say this strongly enough. Bill 20 will fundamentally redraw the blueprint of our local democracy and alter how people's local needs are met and who represents them. Bill 20 sets a dangerous precedent for future provincial governments of all political stripes. The bill reduces the autonomy and authority of a recognized order of government, your local government. It also undermines the power of the local voter. Alberta Municipalities is concerned that the bill will intimidate and even silence legally elected officials who dare to criticize the provincial government. If passed, Bill 20 will allow corporations and unions to fund candidates of their choice. Each corporation and union will be able to donate up to $5,000 to an individual candidate. 
The bill does almost nothing to improve transparency regarding financial donations to individual candidates and the money being raised and spent by third party advertisers. Independent candidates risk being outspent and drowned out by party candidates who enjoy the financial backing of corporations and unions. If the bill passes in its current form, local government elections will end up being about what influential corporations and unions want, not about what voters want. Essentially, Bill 20 puts local governments up for sale to the highest bidder. We know this doesn't sit well with Albertans. They have repeatedly said that big money has no place in local politics. Bill 20 would allow the provincial government to remove councillors and repeal bylaws it doesn't like based on backroom cabinet decisions made without public scrutiny or accountability. The fact that the cabinet decisions are confidential means that the public can never truly know why these decisions were made. Again, Alberta municipalities is speaking out about this because some of our members fear repercussions if they disagree openly with the provincial government. The possibility of locally elected officials being removed at any time for any reason is deeply unsettling and likely to have a chilling effect on councillors who might otherwise speak out against the provincial government. Ultimately, it will be the residents who lose because good ideas that run contrary to the government of the day will be squashed. Sound financial investments in the community's interest will be stalled by partisan bickering and the needs of a community will be overridden in favour of the needs of the corporations and unions who donate the most money. This is not how we build communities in Alberta. Our question to the Premier and the prov provincial government is who stands to benefit from Bill 20? I ask because local governments and most Albertans have not been calling for these changes to be made to our local government electoral process. Instead, time and again, Albertans have said they do not want political parties at the local level. So who is she serving? Who is she listening to if it isn't Albertans? I call on, I call on the province to answer these questions and explain the rationale for introducing Bill 20. To date, the provincial government's reasons for introducing it have been flimsy. They have freely admitted that 70% of Albertans don't want to see political parties in local elections. They have said that 98% of communities won't see it as Calgary and Edmonton are the only places where the idea will be piloted. I'm no mathematician, but I know this pilot project will affect more than 2.4 million Albertans. That's half of all Albertans. Furthermore, Alberta Municipalities has offered several solutions that would address the government's concerns and avoid the need for Bill 20 altogether. We've reviewed Bill 20 and we don't see how it makes local elections any more transparent, free or fair. Local government decisions are made in public, contrasted with Bill 20, in which cabinet decisions to dismiss and repeal will be done in secret. Bill 20 is an attempt by the government to centralize, strengthen, and tighten her government's hold on power. At its heart, Bill 20 does not improve the lives of Albertans. It does not build up our province, nor does it make it easier for communities to grow in unity and harmony. It will set neighbours against each other. It will keep local elected officials constantly second-guessing the best decisions for their communities and impede the progress of our villages, towns and cities. Albertans know adversity and they know how to rise above it together. Albertans recognize that when we work together, we are stronger and we succeed. Bill 20 threatens our society because it threatens to split us apart. Without a healthy, fair, and secure democracy, the Alberta community will change forever. I encourage Albertans to raise their objections and concerns with their members of the Legislative Assembly. Write, email, or call your MLAs and tell them Bill 20 is unacceptable. Tell them you won't allow this provincial government to redraw the blueprint for local democracy in Alberta. Encourage them to represent you 
and express your objections and concerns to Premier Smith and her cabinet ministers. In the spirit of the Premier's words, which she aimed at federal government, the provincial government should do its job and stop trying to do the work of local elected officials. The government has enough to do with health care, education, and affordability issues, issues they are struggling to address effectively. Thank you. Now, if you've enjoyed this episode, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from the municipal affairs, like you saw today, to our in-depth conversations with municipal leaders from across Canada on the cross-border interviews, or our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches, local government at work. We are your go-to source for comprehensive municipal coverage from across Canada. Now, if you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, goes towards amplifying the depth of the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, but as always, just keep talking.